thank you everyone uh, for coming to join our webinar. Um, we are grateful to have you here today uh, for our webinar, Adapting Business to Overcome COVID-19. Uh, this webinar's focus will be on customizing wearables in a continuous dye sub and pigment production workflow. Uh, we also are super excited for our guest speakers here with us today. Uh, we have Top Value Fabrics, Michael Sanders and Michael Compton as well as Daniel Watts, Watts and Julia Vandersummen from Pattern Room. And they have some very exciting things to share with you guys today as well. Uh, I'm gonna go over a brief outline of um, what this webinar is gonna entail. So we'll describe the dye sub and pigment process. Uh, we'll also go through the continuous printing production workflow. Um, we'll touch on the equipment and special features that are uh, most beneficial to this type of production. Um, also, we have some exciting uh, in antimicrobial innovations to share with you and recommended textiles for mass production. Um, then we'll get into some cut and sew finishing uh, equipment uh, and some exciting applications and market trends for vast customization. Uh, so this will discuss some of the wearables other than um, just masks that will be in demand in the market. Uh, and then we'll provide you with some additional resources um, with industry ready patterns where Pattern Room has uh, some additional resources to share with you. And then we'll discuss the manufacturers and textile per design companies um, where you can source uh, some of these services. Uh, and then to, in the closing, we'll discuss some of the exciting uh, announcements and promotions um, from Mamaki and our speakers. Um, and then we'll get into some questions and answers. If you have any questions during the presentation, just um, put them in your chat window uh, and then we'll address them at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is the continuous printing workflow overview um, if you wanna do this type of production. So you would first select your mask pattern and shape, then you would move into your design CAD software, uh, which would be Photoshop, Illustrator, Corel Draw, uh, you know, typical formats would be TIFF, EPS, JPEG, PDF. Uh, there's various other formats as well, but those are the most common. From the CAD software, you would then move into the RIP printing software. And so the RIP printing software uh, works uh, as the software that communicates to the printer. Um, so this is where you set up your workflow, the quantity of um, products that you would like to print uh, and your color management. Uh, Rasterlink 6 Plus is the RIP software that Mamaki provides uh, when you purchase uh, technology. Uh, we also have optional uh, TX Link software for textiles as well. Uh, so when you adapt this type of uh, production workflow, this allows you to uh, do vast customization on wearables and applications, as well as you're able to lower your production costs and have uh, an increased speed to market um, to deliver your products. So first off, we have the dye sublimation transfer process. Uh, and this is where you will print onto dye sublimation paper. Um, and then you will transfer the inks to the polyester fabric through the application of heat. Uh, so the inks go from a solid form on the dye sublimation paper uh, to gas through the application of heat and back into solid form into the polyester textile. So this has excellent wash fastness. Uh, and then from once you have the printed polyester, you would move into a cut and sew uh, production. Uh, for direct to fabric pigment ink process, uh, you would start off with the fabric. Uh, it's an optional to pre-treat fabric when printing with pigment inks. When you pre-treat the fabric, it does increase the durability and uh, the ink development and density. However, it is not necessary. Uh, once you have the fabric, you print directly onto the fabric, and then you heat set uh, the inks onto the textile through the application of heat, uh, calendar heat press. Uh, then you would move into a cut and sew uh, production. And as we see here, this is the sublimation ink and pigment ink fiber compatibility chart. Uh, you'll see here that the pigment inks have the most attraction to um, and affinity for uh, natural fibers such as cotton, lan uh, linen, bamboo, hemp, rayon. Um, they, it is possible to print uh, protein fibers such as wool and silk um, and synthetic protein nylon. 
as well as the other synthetics, polyesters and acetate. Um, however, it has the most attraction for natural fibers, especially with untreated uh, textiles. And when we look at the protein fibers for wool, silk, and synthetics, when printing with pigment inks, it is recommended to pre-treat your textile before printing. Uh, for the sublimation ink, uh, it has the most uh, success and affinity for polyester textile, um, but you're also able to print the other synthetic fibers as shown in this chart. Okay, so for your continuous sublimation and pigment printing workflow, uh, so you start off by setting up your and nesting your uh, files into the RIP software. You decide uh, what color profile you would like to use and how many you would like to print. Um, and then from here, you have options on uh, your workflow. So for dye sublimation transfer, you have two options. You can print and heat transfer to a fabric roll and then go into the cut and sew or you can print and heat transfer to pre-cut uh, pattern pieces and then go into the sew production. For the pigment workflow, you print directly onto the fabric, you heat set the inks, and then you go into the cut and sew production. So here we're gonna share with you some of the technologies and equipment that are best suited for this type of production. Uh, and this is the very exciting TX300P1800 Mark II. This is the world's first dye sublimation transfer paper printer and direct-to-fabric pigment uh, printer. So this printer does small to medium production, but it gives you the versatility to be able to print directly to fabric with pigment inks with a dual ink system. And then you can print onto sublimation transfer paper by easily changing out a, a platen on the machine. It's, it's literally a pop and play. You can go from fabric to paper. Uh, this machine is amazing because it allows end users to have the fabric versatility to print on polyesters and natural fibers with the highest quality possible. Um, and it's ideal for mass customization. Um, and as for this webinar, we're discussing uh, mass production and customized wearables. So this is an ideal uh, technology to utilize. For our dye sublimation printers, um, best for this type of production, we have the small to medium production TS300P 1800. And then for your medium to large production, we have the TS55. Um, both of these technologies are equipped with the Mamaki bulk ink system, which would be a standard of a two liter ink system. Um, however, the TS55 offers you a 10 liter bulk ink system um, as well as it has a mini jumbo roll unit paper unit. Um, so these two options with the TS55 is kind of what pushes it into that medium to large production. Uh, by utilizing a mini jumbo roll unit in the back, you're able to put a roll of transfer paper up to 699 pounds versus the standard 99 pounds, and then go from two liters to 10 liters of ink. So utilizing both of these options allows you to, uh, well, basically the ink pays for itself. Um, and in addition to that, both of these technologies come with fluorescent inks, um, and you can utilize this to uh, offer a very unique product for customization in the market. So I'm going to touch on briefly the Mamaki's core technologies that are ideal for continuous production. Uh, when you're doing a printing production workflow, the most important thing is that you stay printing, you don't have a lot of challenge, challenges and downtime. Um, so these are very important. So we are, our technologies are equipped with a nozzle check unit and a nozzle recovery system. Now what this means is the nozzles are what uh, jets the ink onto the substrate when you're printing through the printhead. So when a nozzle is clogged, uh, you have uh, printing uh, errors. So the technologies, they have a, a light that goes across the platen. And so when an ink droplet isn't fired from a nozzle, it detects it and the machine automatically goes into a cleaning. After the cleaning, if the nozzle is unclogged, then it'll continue printing. But if it is the defective nozzle has not been recovered, uh, it will uh, touch on the nozzle recovery system. Uh, which will replace the defective nozzle um, with a uh, working uh, nozzle, and it'll continue printing. It's a fully automatic workflow that uh, gives you high quality output. Uh, so this is a 
Mamaki's core technologies that will give you the highest quality output. And I'm gonna mention these because this is what really sets the Mamaki technologies apart in the industry when you look at um, a product printed with Mamaki versus the competitor's equipment. Uh, so this is the Mamaki's waveform control technology. Uh, so the frequency at which uh, the ink droplets are jetted, um, they're able to uh, be in a perfect spherical form, which uh, the output is a very fine line in details and the edges of the images are very, very crisp. Um, this is my favorite uh, technology from Mamaki. Uh, also, we have the Mamaki Advanced Pass system, uh, which allows uh, from the printers, it's going from pass to pass to lay the ink down uh, in a gradation uh, of pattern. So this will reduce banding. And if you see in the picture here for normal passes, uh, a very common problem is banding where the ink isn't distributed in a gradation and then you have lines across um, the end uh, print. Um, so this is a great technology for high quality output. Uh, and then lastly, the variable dot printing, uh, when this works with a waveform control, you're able to, it has three different sizes of ink droplets that are be able to lay down on the substrate, which also uh, results in high resolution uh, and high quality output. And now I'm gonna loop in Michael Sanders from Top Value Fabrics uh, to discuss some of the textiles uh, for mask applications. Mike, welcome. Hello, Victoria, and thank you for inviting us to talk, my, my Compton and myself. Uh, I am the um, Director of Printable Textiles and Finishing Technologies for TVF. And uh, yeah, we've uh, come up with a lot of different things for masks. Uh, it's, been, it's been quite a challenge with everybody looking for fabrics for masks since the uh, COVID-19 has started. Yeah, absolutely. We are so uh, thankful and grateful for you to be here with us today. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, what is the right type of fabrics for mask production, as in the construction, should it be a knit or woven fabric, um, natural or synthetic, as well as as we move into the summer months, uh, you know, what are the best textiles for breathability and comfort for end users? Okay, well, these are all great questions. First of all, people have all different types of patterns and ways they're making masks. And it can be either the surgical style mask or the gator style mask, but there is no real right and wrong because these are not N95 masks for the hospital workers. These are protective fabrics that are to try and curtail the passing of particles being passed out by people that are that are out there just uh, walking and jogging and being out in the workplace. So um, we have customers using wovens and knits and also combinations of the two in the same masks and also ask, adding things like filters in them and other things. So um, we have looked at the fabrics ourselves after the initial start of this all happened is finding to find the right fabrics. And one of the major problems that you'll find with masks are, especially as we're getting into the warmer months, is that they're not breathable and they fog up your glasses and they become very uncomfortable. So we've looked at fabrics that we have that we've worked with and we have been doing fabrics for the gator style masks for quite a long time and our customers have been using these and we've got we've been working with this technology for quite a while and we know what kind of works best. So what you're trying to do is have a light fabric that's breathable and also be able to use a finer denier of yarn so you don't have the particulates going through. Also, now that we have the COVID-19, everybody's looking at better ways to protect themselves and we're also adding antimicrobial finishes to them. We have advanced wicking technology that's on them that makes them breathe and wicking the, the sweat from that you get on a mask through the mask and taking it on out. Uh, and also the, the fabrics that, we, that we're designing for these also have uh, SPF 50. And uh, we do these in both polyesters and in wovens. And um, it's, been a, it's been a lot of, lot of a challenge to get these going, but now we're getting the, the new fabrics out that are really, really well made for masks. Uh, so what, what type of finishes does Top Value uh, fabric provide that are ideal for mass production? Um, and I know you just mentioned that you're able to print, I think you said cotton and polyesters. Is that for all the finishes or just antimicrobial? 
Yes, well, no. Um, especially with poly, well, polyester is the main one that you really want to have a wicking finish on. So it breathes better and takes the perspiration out of the mask and through the fabric. We're also adding using the microband technology from Dystar, which is one of the leading makers of textile chemicals in the world, if, if not the number one. And they've been doing the microband technology where they're um, for, on the fabrics for a very long time for taking out the smell and perspiration and odors for that, which, which they do. Um, I don't think anybody's making any kind of special claim that it's gonna take the N19, uh, COVID-19 uh, bacteria away from everybody. No one's going to make those claims because I don't think the, even the CDC has a full understanding of how the virus works completely. So no one's going to make any specific claims on this. We do know these things are going to help and they've been used, used for killing bacteria, other strains of bacteria for years. Um, right. Also to have the wicking finishes it makes a huge, makes a huge difference on the breathability. Yeah, antimicrobial combined with wicking capability uh, is very ideal for this type of uh, comfortability when you have to wear a mask everywhere, absolutely. Um, is the antimicrobial uh, finish, can this be applied to natural fibers such as cotton and polyesters? Yes, they're a little bit different process of applying them, but yes, they have a, it's a, it's a different chemical for cottons than it is for polyesters. Also, we're doing other types of things like if some customers are wanting us to use recycled goods, so we're able to also use a reprieves in, in our fabric to do recycled if the customer wants. We're also able to add water repellents if the customer wants. So we've, we've taken fabrics that we know work very, very good for these uh, products, and we're doing different caveats as far as finishes, depending on what the customer wants, because I some people have completely different uh, wants than others on how they want to make their masks. Absolutely. Uh, do you, what, what type of uh, printing applications are best suited for these types of textiles with these finishes? Well, your, your new machine, it's the combination dye sub and pigments, there's, that's the way to go. So you, you've got that one knocked out very, very well and it works out perfect for the fabrics that we have. I mean, both are good. Some people like one or the other, there is no right or wrong. I mean, the main thing we're talking about here is if everybody's wearing a mask, and also if you see the pictures you have down below, they're a fashion mask. They're not looking like an N95, like you're looking, you're coming out of a surgical thing. Everybody has a, it's starting to be fun. And that's what we're seeing things being done in a more of a textile apparel, fun type of situation for wearing these. And, um, you know, it, it, is, it is a very cool thing that's kind of happening that, that make people more, accustomed to wearing these until we actually have some kind of um, testing and having a cure for the for the virus. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, for with these types of finishes, uh, is there like some special uh, best practices or uh, special care instructions that people should be aware of, such as uh, washing and laundering or um, precautions with perspiration or rub fastness for everyday wear against your face? Yes, there are. I mean, first of all, if we all do what our mothers told us about uh, washing our hands and uh, covering our face when we have cold, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the whole thing with this thing. But the one, there are special care instructions, yes. First of all, whenever you get a brand new mask, the first thing you want to do is wash it. Then the other thing you need to know, anything that ha any fabrics that have a wicking finish, do never use a softener in there, like a bounce or a liquid uh, softener, because that clogs the pores, the pores of these chemicals and makes it so they don't breathe. So make sure you don't use any fabric softeners in with your wash, and that'll help it out a lot. Um, also, you know, it's it's just common sense on how you're handling them. Trying not to put your hand on the on the front if you're using a gator style mask to pull it up and down from the sides and things like that to just, you know, keep keep yourself safe with it. Thank you. Uh, is there any other additional protection uh, that you would uh, recommend for such as filters? Is this necessary with uh, the textiles for the mass production? Well, you know, we have customers making them with, with filters, doing multiple levels of fabrics. And I think, again, there's no right or wrong. The problem is if you start putting way too much stuff in it, they become less comfortable to wear. 
I think the main thing with this is, is to cut down on the particulates going out. And I think the real fear out there and where the real problem is are the people that don't have any symptoms and are out there not wearing masks. If everybody's wearing a mask, it's going to cut down the spread of how this goes out from, from you. And that's the main thing. So the main thing now is getting a, a, a mask that's comfortable. That's why you're going to see a lot of people using the gator style mask like you see in the picture here. Because if you're doing any kind of sports or activities outside, these stay on much, much better. They're a lot easier to have around your neck and bring them up when you get in contact with people. And this, this is going to be a, a big help for people. And I think we're going to see a lot more of the, of the gator style masks being used because they do stay on so much better. I mean, we've been using these for years for skiing, snowboarding, people that go fishing, go hunting, backpacking. They use these and they work very, very well. And now they're just going to be used for other things for this uh, virus, um, but they'll also be able to be used afterwards uh, for the other th other things. And then we're also doing them with different weights, depending if it's you're going to be using it in the summer or the winter. And uh, we're coming up with fabrics on different weight fabrics for winter and summer. Some with even sanded finishes on the inside and heavier weights for that. That's great. The versatility of being able to transition through the seasons uh, is going to be really important because I, uh, I think we may be in this transition for a little while. Uh, thank you, Mike, uh, for all your expertise. Uh, here we're going to look at some of the continuous uh, printing production workflow uh, post finishing. Uh, and Mike Compton from Top Value Fabrics has some uh, recommendations for us of the best textiles and equipment here. Hi, Mike. Welcome. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Um, thank you uh, to Mamaki for having us here today, and uh, uh, thank you to everybody from around the world who's joining us. I see a lot of familiar names popping up on the screen, so that, that's great. Um, so I'll just uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, heat presses. Uh, what's shown here is two Practix heat presses. Practix are manufactured uh, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia in the U.S. There are a lot of different types of heat presses on the market. Uh, the one you see on the left is a, is a rolled roll heat press. So primarily for, for what we work with in the dye sublimation and just direct disperse uh, part of printing, this is what you're going to find in the industry. Uh, Victoria talked about this a little bit early on. Uh, you, you print on the transfer paper here and feed both the fabric and the transfer paper on the roll-to-roll -roll press where it goes across the heated drum. Typically, they're, they're oil. They can be electric, but most of them are oil. And what this does is it uh, turns the um, transfer ink into a gas it also opens up dye sites on the fibers with the heat and allows the dye to deposit into those sites. So when the fabric cools, when it's finished, it's actually locking that color in there. So if you think about what Mike said about the masks and printing, um, you know, dye sublimation um, on polyester, uh, you're locking that color in. So when you go to wash it, you're not going to have any problems with uh, ink washing out or things of that nature. Um, so these are these are very common. Again, there's there's several different types on the market. Uh, the heat press that you see on the right is, is um, it, it's still roll to roll, but it has a flat table on it. And you'll find these more often um, used for apparel printing. Uh, could be jersey type things, um, but also masks as well. Um, and, and it's just a, a little bit easier to see the patterns laid out on the table as they're coming across uh, to check them. And, and again, there's like there's a lot of different types of heat presses, um, all the way from most of you are probably familiar with the t-shirt the type presses. Um, up to you know 10 foot wide um, roll to roll heat presses too. So these are these are a couple of great examples and and again there's there's a lot out there uh, and, and you also and Victoria mentioned the shelves are going to need a, a heat press for direct dispersed inks. The difference there is you're not printing on transfer paper you're printing direct to the fabric and you still need to run that through the heat to to set the ink as I mentioned earlier expand the fibers set the dye in. Uh, but it also is what you need to bloom the color and get those rich dark colors and, and bright colors as well. Um, and, you know, temperature, dwell time, how long it's on the heat press, those vary by fabric. Uh, most of them are pretty standard, but you can get into a thicker, a much thicker fabric, then you'll have a lot higher temperature, dwell time, and even pressure on the rollers as it feeds through the heat press. So um, that's, that's a little bit about heat presses in a, in a nutshell. So do you want to discuss so some of the... Oh yeah, here, here you go, Mike. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Thank you. You know, one of one of the things you know that we're we're proud to do at uh, Top A Fabrics is, is mar partner with a lot of folks around around the world uh, 
Um, you know, it's, it's printers like Mamaki, it's equipment that's really important in your entire process. So when you come to, to folks like us at, at Top of Your Fabrics, like myself and Mike, we're going to be able to recommend things to you for your entire workflow, um, not just the type of fabric you, you need, but although that's what we're experts at. So what we're looking at here is actually a photo of a, a, a Gerber uh, cutter. And a couple of years ago, um, Gerber Technologies acquired MCT, which was, uh, uh, is, is part of Gerber now, but it's a great company as far as uh, manufacturing different types of um, automated cutting machines. So what you're seeing here, again, fully automated, uh, will replace doing things by hand, basically. So what you'll find in a lot of dye sublimation shops is when they print, they're, they're hand cutting. They're either hand cutting uh, cold cut or they're, they're, um, they're cutting with a hot knife. And part of that is here, you, you know, this, this piece of equipment here from Gerber, um, it's, it's, very, it's very nice, very unique. It actually comes with 11 different, different modules with different tools on it. So if you're dealing with a, a, a warp knit fabric, you can actually cold cut that. So um, you can use a, a rotary blade as an example to cut the, the finished designs out. And if you're using a woven fabric, this cutter um, also has a laser module on it. So when you laser cut, as an example, uh, you're sealing the edges of the fabric, uh, especially on a woven, so you're not going to get any fraying. Uh, again, like I said, you can cold cut a uh, warp knit because it's not going to fray. It's got a lock knit construction, so no matter where you cut it, the, the edges are not going to fray. And um, this this particular piece of equipment, um, again, it, it has a dual belt setup. It, it runs extremely fast uh, with the um, Gerber Tiger Vision software. Uh, you can really scan the entire roll, and then um, it'll start cutting, and it'll just cut automatically and feed through. There's six vacuum zones on here too, so uh, depending on the media that you're that you're cutting and running through the machine, it, it holds it down very well to keep the uh, fabric or media stable as it goes through. And again, you know, um, there's probably folks from Gerber online here, so if you are, uh, um, thank you. Um, but um, again, this is a great piece of equipment. It comes up to 3.2 meters wide, uh, so 10 feet, so it can handle all, all types of graphics. And you know, um, Victoria showed a slide earlier on, you may not remember, but it showed a lot of masks lined up on the screen. And with this type of equipment, you can print and nest your designs closely together. So you're really saving on media too as you, as you run it through the, the piece of equipment and cut it. Um, a, a couple other things, and again, it's perfect for PPE. One, one thing I'll mention, if you're using a stretch fabric that, that you want to make into a mask, you can actually load it on the machine, laser cut it or rotary cut it, and you're going to have a finished mask when it comes off because you can just take it off, pull the ear loops over your ears, and, and you're good to go. Um, and just a couple more things that I'll mention. Um, Gerber Technology opened uh, their innovation center in New York City and in February, it's quite a quite an amazing place. And basically, what they've done there is they've set up a, a micro factory where you can print, run through the cutter, and and on down the finishing line. So it's a really a, a very complete um, example of what you can do with digital production. And not to leave Mamaki out, but this is important. Mamaki also does the same thing at their um, their textile center in Los Angeles, where Victoria is based. So, you know, here's a, a couple of great opportunities to look at equipment with good partners and uh, really see what, what's available to, to really run, you know, high speed production with low labor, labor rates. And um, this is really the state of the art type of equipment that you want to take a look at. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mike. And just to add to that, uh, the Mamaki's Los Angeles showroom um, textile innovation center. Uh, has adapted an MCT cutter. We also have, uh, are fully equipped with pre and post treatment for textiles, as in coating and steaming machines for direct to fabric printing. We have every type of ink set that you could print onto a textile. Um, we also have uh, full sewing, uh, post finishing equipment, cutting tables, even mannequins and forms. Um, and our Tiger Industrial High Speed uh, Printer. Uh, so it's a very exciting place, uh, and we invite you guys all to come check out and uh, your solutions at our facility as well. Uh, here, uh, we just uh, we see that there's going to be further growing markets in demand, uh, customizing wearables other than masks. 
um, as we go through and transition COVID-19. Um, so here we identify some of the markets that will start to uh, be in demand. So we have retail, hospitality, branded wearables. So that's gonna be your hotels, uh, your airplanes, um, amusement parks, uh, restaurants. Uh, then your general public everyday use wearables. And these are gonna be as we transition through the seasons. Uh, this is gonna be for people to go out in public and feel comfortable. Like when things reopen again, people are gonna want to wear something that looks attractive, but also, uh, you know, feels good. So then sports and athletic teams, um, also for wearables where teams uh, will be playing in close proximity. So new innovations will be created here. Um, we see children and high risk individuals will be a market for, um, and a high premium will be paid for these types, but a market for wearables uh, for children and people with high risk. Uh, also, there'll be a high demand for uplifting and happy feeling prints in the medical and scrub uh, industry. Uh, so these are all, are all great wearable markets to uh, focus on creating for. Uh, and here I'm going to loop, uh, loop in Pattern Room uh, and so they can share a little bit about uh, what Pattern Room is um, and what types of resources uh, they're offering to the market currently. So hi Daniel. Good morning, Victoria. A very, Welcome. very early morning in from uh, from Melbourne in Australia. Um, great to be here. Thank you very much for inviting us. It's uh, fantastic to uh, to partner with, with Mamaki on uh, on this seminar. Absolutely, and uh, we do have Julia here too, uh, Pattern Room CEO. Welcome, Julia. Thank you for being here as well. Oh, thank you very much. Lovely to be here with everyone. Okay. Uh, could you guys just tell um or Daniel, could you uh, explain more about what Pattern Room is and what resources um, you guys are providing? Yeah, ha yeah, happily. Um, Pattern Room is a is a, a labor of love over the last sort of seven seven or eight years, and we launched in in June last year. Uh, what it essentially is is a catalog of industry ready patterns. Um, the, the the ideal thing to load up into your into your um, CAD software into Corel or Adobe Illustrator, overlay whatever graphics that you're you're looking for, and then run through that die sub or direct to fabric print um, uh, print process. The the catalog is sitting at a at a lazy 149,000 different patterns at the moment. Um, the the development team is is working furiously in the background, and and it's a small team. There's only seven in the team, but uh, we're all based here in Melbourne. Uh, and they're, they're generating around about 1,000 to 1,500 new patterns a week, which we're constantly up, updating the, uh, the catalog. Uh, we, we really are very much focused on custom sportswear and, and basics, if you like. So the catalog is full of t-shirts, singlets, uh, pullovers, uh, jackets, uh, leggings, shorts, those sorts of things. The the ideal type garments that uh, that most sports are looking for, uh, and we're very very mindful that, that that needs to grow as as we constantly get inquiries for new types of garments for different sports that we hadn't considered before. Um, we, we have a broad brush estimate that we'll, we'll probably take our foot off the gas in terms of uh, of developing new patterns when we get to about six million. <clears throat> which is um, hopefully should cover pretty much everything that anyone would be would be looking to uh, to make. Very impressive. Uh, do you see any um, patterns in high demand right now that you guys are offering to the market? Um, and uh, you know, any other things that you think will become more popular as things normalize? Yeah, absolutely. I, look, the, I mean, the world has obviously shifted. I mean, globally, the world has shifted, not just in Australia, but also, you know, the US and uh, and across Europe and Asia. Uh, we we have seen a, a dramatic swing from people looking to buy uh, basketball singlets and uh, and the like uh, through to medical scrubs. So we we've turned our attention to to helping to address the 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 shortage of uh, medical type products. Uh, so we're, we're seeing quite a swing to um, uh, to medical scrubs uh, on our website at the moment. Uh, the team are also working at, at putting up some patterns for um, PPE gowns and, and hazmat suits as well. Um, 
Interestingly though, as parts of the world are opening up, um, we're, we are starting to see a swing back to, to people looking for, uh, for products, for sports that seem to be uh, being, um, I guess, adopted or, or picked up by people uh, a little bit earlier than, than others. Um, fewer of the team sports, um, we're starting to see uh, a lot more interest in sports where social distancing is, is, is part of the sport, I guess. Um, uh, sports like golf, uh, tennis, where you're at opposite ends of a court, so it's very, very easy to maintain that social distancing. Uh, Ten-pin bowling, uh, trail running, mountain biking. There's a range of sports that we're starting to, to get some, um, some interest uh, from people that are inquiring about um, how we might fill, our, um, fill up our, our catalogue of patterns so that we're ready to go. Um, uh, we, we are offering our, our patterns, are, I mean, as I mentioned before, there's 149,000 on the website at the moment. They, they range in sizes from four zero, so from newborns, or, but we're not offering a complete range of stuff for newborns at the moment, all the way to 8XL, uh, so 8 extra large in men or a 28 uh, for women and pretty much everything in between. So there's, there are things there for everybody. Um, we can fit most people, although I did have an inquiry the other day from somebody who was looking for a, a rugby jersey in a nine extra large, um, and I'm scratching my head about that. That's um, and, and both Michaels from from Top Value would be interested because that's probably about twenty meters of fabric in that jersey alone. <laughs> I suggest. Um, so the 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 opportunities and and uh, when part of our team, uh, we we test all of the patterns before we put them up, which which sounds incredible, but uh, we we have a a very detailed process that sits behind the scene to make sure these patterns work, um, that they fit beautifully. Uh, and that for us is critical. That's one of our, our missions is to rid the world of poorly fitting clothing. So we're, we're strong advocates for ensuring that clothing fits very well. Um, so our team who are normally um, uh, working uh, furiously on testing some of our patterns, have switched and we're making face masks for a couple of essential services businesses here in Melbourne at the moment. Now, unfortunately, we are unlucky. We don't have a Mamaki printer um, and we, we probably need to organise one. Otherwise, we'd be custom printing uh, these face masks for these clients. Um, we can help going, with that. Right, yeah, look, hey, if you can, if you can air freight one over, it, it would be great. <laughs> I um, appreciate that air freight at the moment to Australia is ridiculously expensive. So um, we'll have a chat with Mamaki in Australia about, uh, about doing that. Uh, additionally, uh, thank you so much, um, but additionally, what do you think would be a best practice for um, end users or print service providers during this transitional time? Do you uh, have any recommendations um, on practices uh, as we transition in and through COVID-19? Absolutely, Victoria. There are some fantastic things that people can be doing right now. Uh, if you have a catalogue of patterns that, that you have been using for your, your custom sportswear or corporate wear or those sorts of things, now is the ideal time to be doing a stock take of, of those patterns to see what it is you have. And crucially, what is it that you have that doesn't work? Because if you've got patterns in your pattern library that don't work, are you producing garments for your customers that don't fit well, that don't work properly? Uh, now is the time to, to, to identify those and look to swap those out, uh, look to rationalise that database. Um, we're working with a number of clients here at the moment who have got several thousand patterns, uh, many of which simply don't work and that they're uncomfortable using. So we're working actively with them at the moment to identify which of those patterns work for them and which of them don't work for them. And then looking for solutions through the pattern room library of, of patterns to swap out those ones that are crucial and then slowly build that pattern library back up again. Uh, they might not go back to two or 3,000 patterns. They might end up only with 1,000 or even 500 patterns. But what they'll know with those patterns is that they all work, that they all fit beautifully together so a regular fit in a size large of whatever it is that your customer orders, they all work together. We're also working with a number of clients who
do not have patent libraries um, who have switched, who are in the process of switching their production from offshore to onshore. So they're looking at doing uh, that entire um, uh, print process uh, uh, locally, so in their own workrooms, uh, rather than outsourcing those. So they are looking at buying Mamaki printers, they are looking at buying Gerber cutters um, uh, and bringing in that cut and sew capability in house. They are in this tricky predicament where they have had, um, and, and China has been um, a big source of that capability for a long time. They're in a tricky predicament where they don't have any patents at all. Their supplier in China is retaining those patents for the fairly obvious reasons. So they're, they're now trying to figure out, well, how do I build my patent library from scratch? So we're advising uh, a number of clients about what they should start with and how they should, should build up that patent library very much based on the specifics about who their customer is and who they're going to be supplying to. Um, it's, it's fantastic because uh, Mamahi gets to sell more printers, more ink, but it's also bringing that control back. So the quality control, the fit, the patterns that they're using, they now control all of those things rather than outsourcing it to a third party and, and being at that mercy of, of what's actually provided to them. So there are some fantastic things. Of course, making masks is a critical thing at the moment, as, 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 uh, as you have touched on and both Michaels have touched on as well. Uh, the more people wearing masks uh, in society as they go outside, the more likely the reduction of the transmission of this, this horrible virus will be. Um, everybody should be wearing masks. Um, some of the masks that we've seen in the presentation look fantastic. Um, the, the ability to print custom graphics on them um, we have one client here as we go into our football season, given we're, we're just at the start of winter, uh, one of our clients is custom printing the football team graphics on the masks so that uh, you can be supporting your football team, even though it's unsure whether our football season will even, um, even start. Nonetheless, you can support your team. Uh, you can put whatever graphics you want on it. Um, no longer do these masks need to look like medical masks. Uh, that can become a fashion statement and um, you, you need to have a, a, you know, quite a number of them in your, in your wardrobe to, uh, to match whatever it is that you're wearing from the waist up for your, um, for your video meetings with clients. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I totally yeah. agree. I think uh, you guys have a very unique uh, offering to the market. There's nobody else out there like you uh, that I'm aware of. And um, I think it really allows people to take control of their supply chains and bring manufacturing uh, in-house. Uh, and mostly for the sportswear market, uh, the post uh, uh, sewing and cutting uh, production is very simple. Uh, wouldn't you agree? Yes, indeed. The, um, yeah. the, the technology that you've, you've shown us today, for example, um, really helps to automate that process just tremendously. Um, the only the only part of it really that you, you can't fully automate, I guess, is the is the sewing element of it. Um, uh, we are certainly finding the industry in Australia there is um, uh, heavy job losses in the fashion sector. Um, so there are an enormous number of seamstresses. We call them machinists in Australia, but seamstresses uh, out there who are unemployed. Um, so there is a, there, there's quite a lot of skill out there and we know the same is happening in the US that, that um, being able to find one of these highly skilled seamstresses to be sewing those garments for you is, um, is certainly a, a, you know, a relatively easy thing nowadays. The, the machinery that you require to sew uh, garments together uh, starts to get a little bit different when we get into swimwear and leggings, but certainly for most garments, uh, the machinery to actually, the sewing machines, if you like, are also not particularly expensive. So your capital outlay on those is, is not, not great. Um, so it, it is a wonderful time to actually look to, act, to, to have that in, entire um, uh, supply chain in-house. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't get any better. Yeah, thank you. Uh, also on that note, uh, we're gonna. Uh, we'd like to provide uh, all of our viewers with some additional resources. Um, so these are cut and sew manufacturers uh, within the U.S. Um, that are great for uh, this type of production. Um, in Los Angeles, we have Indie Source. Uh, 
they're a full package manufacturer. So if you are a print service provider or a business that is looking to move into the uh, cut and sew and production side uh, for wearables or sportswear, uh, mass production, uh, these are uh, companies that are a great resource. IndieSource uh, does full package. Uh, so that means they'll even do sourcing materials, pattern making, uh, sampling and small batch production for you. They even have additional services, website, advertising, photography, um, but they have been a pioneer currently in the mass uh, production industry. Uh, they were actually recently just featured on ABC News, very exciting stuff. Um, and then we also in Los Angeles have Lefty Productions, uh, and they are also uh, a full package uh, manufacturer from design development, and then they do apparel and bag accessories. Um, and we'll assist you with developing your brand and uh, the sewing and uh, cut and sew manufacturing. Uh, in New York City, uh, we have HD Fashion. They're a larger cut and sew production manufacturer. Um, and MCM Enterprise is it a New York City manufacturer that does from sketching uh, to the cut and sew manufacturing process. Um, we can provide you uh, with this additional information. Uh, feel free to reach out after the webinar. Uh, to follow up with that, uh, say you're a print service provider or a business um, that is looking for designs. You don't have an in-house design team or the technical skills to do the print designs. Uh, these are great companies uh, within the US uh, that you can source print designs from. Um, they'll give you a wide variety, uh, variety of styles. Some of them even provide uh, custom uh, print designs for your business. Um, so these are great resources as well. From our speakers today, uh, we have some additional resources uh, to share with you. Uh, so for Mamaki, uh, we have developed a COVID-19 application page uh, platform on our website. And this provides uh, information, not just on textile how-to uh, applications in response to COVID-19, but 3D printing, soft signage, um, and, and industrial products. Um, in addition to that, we have a new platform is called Together We Print. Uh, so uh, for all customers uh, and current uh, Mamaki users, they are able to post their business um, on the Together We Print page and list the services that they provide. Uh, so we can put everybody um, that is demanding these type of services in touch with them um, and draw the industry together. Uh, additionally, Top Value Fabrics um, has created a resource center, a very impressive page on their website. Uh, uh, Mike's, do you, uh, either of you guys like to uh, explain further? Well, yeah, one of the things you just want to make sure is that we can supply any type of fabric for the mass constructions that you need. And we also have a huge line of fabrics that are made here in the United States with all these special finishes that you might want on the mass. And we have a full sales team across the country that is ready to, to step in and help you and work with you on your mask uh, fabrics. Yeah, just in, to add to what Mike's saying, Victoria, there's um, if you go to the the website, you're going to find um, all the various fabrics and what we recommend for masks, gowns, uh, scrubs, pretty much all the applications that we talked about, and um, uh, and and some of those uh, include print media fabrics. And I know that uh, we're going to get into print media fabrics in the next webinar, um, but there's there's a lot of exciting things happening there too with antimicrobial fabrics and things of that nature. So it's a good resource. So um, we, we uh, encourage people to visit and um, contact us if they have a question. Very good. You're going to end uh, Pattern Room. Uh, PatternRoom.com is uh, has their uh, full listing of their 150,000 patterns uh, that they have on the market. Um, good resource. Uh, additionally, for our April 1st to June 26th promotions for technology, we have some great things for textiles. Um, you'll see for our uh, small to medium production models, we have um, after a 9,000 instant rebate, uh, you have it's down to 16,995. This is an amazing deal. With that comes a $1,000 consumable voucher and two years coverage. Uh, there's also for a dye sublimation medium to large production model, uh, there's also a 2,000 instant rebate. Um, a thousand dollar voucher and a two years of coverage. Uh, the coolest thing about the promotions happening right now is there is a TS55 uh, has the bundle um, promo, uh, which would allow you to adapt 
uh, the full uh, jumbo roll unit and the 10 liter uh, ink bulk ink system uh, where you're able to uh, greatly, uh, the ink will basically pay for itself and reduce uh, uh, production costs immensely. Mamaki also has installed a payment relief for up to six months. Uh, and you can check out more of these financing options on our website. Um, there's different options for people that are looking to adapt equipment um, here as well. Uh, we also invite you to uh, come schedule a demo or get more information. We have specialists at all of our regions in the United States at our seven regional showrooms. Um, yeah, please uh, get in touch with us. We, we would love to have you, um, you know, come demo uh, your products at our facilities. Um, and uh, on that note, uh, I would uh, like to uh, loop in Lisa Humrich to go over any questions uh, that have been proposed during the webinar. She is uh, Mamaki USA's uh, PR manager. Thanks, Victoria. We do have a handful. Um, the first question is, if fabric softeners are used um, with the fabrics that have been discussed today, uh, can they be washed out or does it permanently ruin the fabric? No, you can, yes, you can definitely wash it out. Just put it back in the wash, leave the softener out and you're ready to go again. It'll open up the pores and you're ready to rock. There's a follow on question with that one uh, regarding the antimicrobial um, properties. Uh, is there any way to harm those properties? Not really. Um, it's, you know, the, the microband guarantees it for 25 washes. They're, they're really good finishes that really, really do the work. And uh, no, there's not a lot you, you can do to harm those. Great. Um, yet another question about fabrics. Uh, can these specialized coatings protect wearables like sportswear um, from carrying viruses and bacteria too? Well, no, I don't think anybody's going to put exact claims on this virus because we don't know enough about it yet. So I don't know if, if you can. We do know that, that in the past, these this, these products have worked very good to, to kill bacteria. But again, if you're doing a mask and somebody touches, is wearing the mask and they touch something and they scratch their face, they could get the thing. So you don't really know exactly where it's coming from in all, in all stages. So I don't think anybody's gonna put a complete guarantee on anything with the antimicrobial. Sure. That makes sense. Um, Victoria, this one's for you. Uh, do the Mamaki core technologies that you mentioned earlier cost extra or are they included? They're inherent in all of the Mamaki uh, printing machines. Perfect. Um, and then this one is actually for Daniel. Um, it's a question about the libraries. Are they all a cart or are they preloaded? How does that work? In, uh for the 149,000 patterns that are there, it really is a case of um, selecting specifically what it is you need. Um, each of the patterns are available in individual sizes, so you can you can purchase uh, a DXF and AI. And I should point out that you do get both um, the Adobe Illustrator and the DXF file, which will work happily in Corel Draw. So you can buy it in individual sizes, or in fact, you can buy it in graded sets. So you can buy it in a six size graded set or even a 12 size graded set. So it really is very much a la carte. You can choose precisely the pattern that you want in precisely the size or groups of sizes that you're after. There's a, a follow on question to that. Uh, do you design custom designs? No, we don't. Um, we, we don't have that. that capability to do custom designs at the moment. Um, uh, certainly, we, we do have a form on our website. If, if you don't see something that's up there, um, please let us know. It, it may be that those designs are on our roadmap and, and coming soon. Uh, it might be that they're sitting in the background and, and I've been distracted by shiny things and haven't uploaded them onto the website <laughs> yet. Um, like looking at the marking printers, which I'm just trying to figure out in my mind where they're <laughs> that in our workroom. Um, so they, they may well be close by or, or sitting in the background ready to go. So please do contact us um, and we, we can, we can uh, look to help. Just, well, just to add to that, 
that. I just wanted to add one thing to that. Also, the uh, cut and sew manufacturers such as IndieSource uh, and Lefty Productions, uh, these are uh, manufacturers that will develop uh, custom patterns if that's uh, the area that you want it to go into as well. That's all. Perfect. Um, last question is, are the inks that were mentioned earlier made by Mamaki? Uh, yes. And that, well, wait, we might have one more. I see something in the chat window. Hold on just one sec. Yes. Um, aside from Gerber and MCT cutters, what other supported cut files can be generated from raster link? Do, uh, Mike, do you want me to answer this or do you want to answer this? So it, well, it's from, a simple function. From raster link, yeah. yeah. Well, for Rastlink software, I think you're you're probably going to know more what you can do with the the cuts from there. Yeah, so it's very simple. So in Illustrator, uh, you just need it's the same thing when you do a cut contour. So when you have a spot color, it's basically a swatch color. Uh, you fill that swatch color in in your cut line, um, and then when you pull this uh, pattern into the cutting software, it recognizes it and then uh, cuts it out easily. Perfect. Um, we have a few more. Uh, how many textile inks does Mamaki make? Uh, we have every type of textile ink. So we have acid inks, which are most suitable for printing on protein fibers, which will be your silk, your wool, um, and then your synthetic protein nylon. We have fiber reactive inks, which print on all of your natural fibers, cotton, cellulose, uh, cellulose fibers, cotton, hemp, bamboo. Uh, fiber reactive inks also can print on silks and wools, uh, the protein fibers. Uh, we have direct disperse inks for printing directly uh, onto polyesters and synthetic fibers. Um, we have pigment inks, which we discussed in this presentation, uh, that are bound to the surface of fibers. Uh, we also have uh, dye sublimation inks, um, and that's, that's all of the textile inks. <laughs> Perfect. Um, we have one more question. Is it your recommendation to take a, a women's size six and grade it appropriately for smaller sizes? Answer this one. <laughs> um, I'll answer this one. Uh, so I would say that women's size six is at the lower end of the women's range. You're still going to go down to probably a zero. So you can do that. If you're going into tweens or teenage or, or kids wear, that really is a different block, it's a different shape. So you'd really need to start from a different block, probably from a around an age 10 and then grade up and down from there. Perfect, we actually have one more. Um, are pattern room purchases licensed patterns or do I own them? They are um, uh, licensed, so they're, they're leased uh, to you. Um, so you, you can't transfer them to anyone else. Uh, but you can use them as many times as you like. So uh, whether or not you, you make one garment or a million garments, that's up to you. There's no additional cost in, involved in it. Uh, the only thing that you're not allowed to do with the patterns is to, to give them to someone else or, or on sell them or, or those sorts of things. Uh, are they editable? Look, they are editable. Um, they, uh, 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 we don't recommend it. Um, the reason we don't recommend it is that if you edit one of the files and then come back later to buy another garment in that fit, uh, and it, it may no longer match the one that you've changed. Um, so yes, yes they are, but we, we recommend against it. We've got, for example, we've got 4,000 combinations of t-shirts. So uh, if you need to edit it, you, you probably we might have that pattern that you're actually looking for on the website anyway. I think Julia wants to say something on this. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's really important that you don't edit it because we're sending through cut lines, not sew lines. So it's very easy to make mistakes that are going to make it difficult for your machinist to sew because seams will no longer match. Um, it takes really a trained pattern maker to understand what the ramifications are for changing patterns. So, for example, we had someone a long time ago who ordered a, a jacket from us and then called up and said, this jumper, I can't get my head through. I said, well, you didn't buy a jumper, you bought a jacket. It's quite a different neckline and it's a very different hood. And so he uh, 
reluctantly we had to go and purchase the other one, but it was just a very simple explanation as to how changing a pattern has many other things that can be affected by it. So we'd just rather that you purchase. The, the patterns are very discounted compared to making them from scratch. So just creating a pattern library that's clean and uh, workable is a really important thing. It's one of the reasons why people come to Pattern Room. Thank you, Julia. Um, we have a question for Top Value Fabrics. Uh, does Top Value Fabrics make fabric for furniture that can be antimicrobial as well? Great question. Yes, we uh, we, we have all different types of fabrics for uh, upholsteries and home decor. And uh, these kind of finishes can be added to them. Um, and yes, we, we, we do it with a, with a stain and soil release on there, the class six that uh, does repel and make it so things can't go into them. So that, that is something we do and it works on the dye sublimation printers. We will also cover this in an upcoming web a webinar on uh, interior and outdoor decor uh, on transitioning um, a business with applications in response to COVID-19 as well. Um, we have a question about uh, textile printing. It says, sounds like Mamaki has the textile printing space covered. Do you recommend starting with dual ink printer? It really depends on the type of applications you want to do. If you want the versatility be to be able to do uh, cotton fabrics and uh, polyester stretch for sportswear or swim, uh, that would be the best ink set to do. Um, if you're looking, your business is really primarily um, just swimwear or sportswear and you want a really wide color gamut, for instance, you might want to do, you know, an eight color uh, dye sublimation uh, ink set, for instance. Great. That is the last of our questions. Um, we can give one more minute to see if anybody has uh, any other questions. Oh, we have one more. Um, does the software mentioned earlier come with the printer? Uh, the RasterLink 6 Plus does. Uh, the TX Link software is an optional uh, RIP software. Okay. Just a few, I'm going to give you all 30 seconds. <laughs> we don't want this to last too long. We also could discuss, I hope everybody that has joined us today, um, uh, you know, find uh, tunes into our upcoming webinars. We'll be doing uh, the next webinar series on soft signage applications and transitioning business, as well as um, another webinar on interior, as I mentioned a second ago, interior and outdoor decor, um, applications for retail, hospitality, uh, and home uh, market, too. Perfect. I'm going to add one uh, more thing, Victoria, in case anybody's uh, curious. This webinar will be uploaded to our website um, and we will email everybody that has registered for the webinar um, the link. Very good. I think that's it. We have no more questions. All right. Well, so if uh, that's it for the questions, uh, we'll come to a closing for the webinar. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you to all of our guest speakers. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you. Um, yeah, feel free to reach out and stay tuned for our upcoming webinars. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Victoria. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you, Victoria. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you.